Hello everyone. Um, the interpretation of religious text, uh, which of course is relevant to people who consider religion to be relevant and they have a text on which they rely in their attempts to understand the will of God. Um, it's relevant to them, it may not be relevant to other people that are, that are not religious, but then it does become relevant in an indirect kind of way because if religious people interpret their text in a certain way and that affects and impacts their their disposition and the way they live their lives then that can have wider implications so even for people who are non-religious or irreligious or atheistic agnostic or whatever or are believers of a different faith how we interpret religion um and, and how people of religion interpret their religious text becomes important and and in that context the the the, the, the there's this uh discussion about um or this concept called uh the prior text and, and that's this this is you know by way of a sort of a, a a preamble point this is particularly important in the islamic faith because as muslims we believe that we are reading the verbatim word of god that that you know um unlike the gospel the, um, muslims believe that the that the word of god is as expressed in the quran as we find it today um and so there's an engagement with god's um with the words attributed to god there um and there's a concept you know called prior text which is that when we're reading a text obviously there's the the reader on the one hand and then you have the text on the other and often we think that this is an interaction between the reader and the text whereas actually when when we are reading a religious text or any text for that matter we are approaching it with a prior text we're reading it through the prism of the prior text and so actually there's at the very least three dynamics or three actors in there so you have the text that is being read you have the reader who is reading the text and then you have that reader's prior text which almost if you want to visualize it it sort of acts as a filter between the reader and the text and everything that the reader uh, receives in inverted commas everything that he or she takes from the text comes through the prism of the prior text and what is the prior text well the prior text can be on the one hand it could be everything that, that the person in question has read up until that point which therefore skews and in, and and nuances and enriches um, uh, their point of view um, so it includes literally other texts but it also includes their uh, experiences the socio-historic cultural context in which they were brought up in which they are reading the text that they're reading and also <clears throat> of course it includes um, it includes the, the the you know the state in which they are reading the text the questions that they are asking in approaching that text and so forth and so the prior text is actually really important and um, it sort of helps us to distinguish and understand that there is a difference between that which is written in to the text and that which is read out of the text that which is written into the text is the intent of the author in this case god and that which is read out of the text is of course an interpretation of what was written into it and those two things may not be the same and where do we see this i mean i you know just thinking about this um moments ago i it struck me actually that this is a very common uh situation in our day-to-day -day interactions with one another uh especially in the matrimonial context because um you know when you are speaking to your other half your better half um you say something and as it happens from time to time the other person hears something else or vice versa they say something and you hear something else because you're hearing it through the prism of your prior text if you like and that is things that were said before and your state of mind at the time and so forth and, and therefore uh there is a difference between what one person is saying one party is saying and what the other party is actually hearing and when 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 you are responding to something that you feel is hurtful or offensive or unkind or you know uh, so forth you're 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 responding to that impression of what was said and so it really takes a lot of effort to say just to pause and just to 
uh, rewind what was said and why it was said. And sometimes people will say something that is offensive, but offense was not intended or hurtful, but it wasn't intended to be. So it, it, it takes a great deal of effort to look beyond the semantics to see the broader context and see the emotional state in which that thing was expressed. And sometimes, you know, things can be a call for a, a cry for help, a cry for sympathy. Um, and, you know, it takes effort. And what I'm trying to say, I guess, is that, you know, we have these experiences. I think we all have them, you know, in our day to day interactions with colleagues, with friends, with partners and so forth. And we can see how, you know, things can get very easily misunderstood, especially when they are communicated outside of the, the spoken word. And so, in other words, when they are communicated via text or email, where nuances are easily lost, where you can't add, well, you can add emojis, but you don't always do, especially in formal text, right? And so, and, and the intonation, the voice, you know, you can't, because as we're told, communication is what, 90, 95% or whatever the, the percentage is. It's actually body language. It's the tone, it's the, it's the facial expression, it's the mimics that accompany the thing that you are saying rather than literally the thing you are saying. And so when you when the with the written text with the written word you obviously don't have all of that. And even in your interaction with somebody face to face it's very easy to to misunderstand. And so if one of the if one of the parties that is actually, you know, communicating did that communication, you know, many centuries ago uh through the written word through text in another language that obviously has evolved and morphed over the centuries. Um, the importance of understanding the distinction between that which is written in and that which is read out, and the importance of understanding the difference between uh, the, 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 the unknowable intention of the author versus the inescapable interpretation of the reader and of course the importance of understanding prior text becomes all the more relevant i think anyway it's just a thought have a good day